Hey everybody, it's The Walker. So what are we doing today? Well, today we are um, we're at the trailhead. Let's go in, let's go in the woods. We're gonna find ourselves a spot, stay here for a few days maybe. But we'll talk about sustainable camp. Camp which can be sustained over a little bit of time. Let's take off. Dirty, clean, soon to be filled. So what we're doing is sustainable camping, which means I want all the creature comforts. I want my phone, I want the internet, I want electricity, I want water, and I want fuel, but I don't want to keep going into town to get it. We're not in the middle of nowhere, actually. We're, I would say, two, three miles in on the AT, there's people camping here. There's, they've, got, they've got dogs. There's a few right over there. I can see um, railroad tracks and far beyond the railroad tracks, there's a highway. So we just kind of blend in with the rest of the campers along the Appalachian Trail, which is good, but a good situation where you want a little privacy. And I may might keep the camp running for a while. So a lot of this stuff is going to be just, um, it's not going to be entirely practical. Some will be very practical. Well, as we're only staying here for a couple of days, you know, the practicality will come in if we were here for like weeks. But anyways, let's, uh, let's get, uh, let's, let's cook some food. Hell, mosquitoes. One thing about food, we want stuff that's not, I don't have to refrigerate. I picked this up on the ride in. Just went supermarket, grabbed a bunch of stuff, took off, you know, trucks. Two, three miles that way. So this stuff doesn't require refrigeration, like pepperoni and this um, barley mix. Things like that is what we want. Let's get going on it.
sometimes I wonder what's up. The little flashy light. I know, there's a technical reason. Is this phone watching me? I don't know. There we go. I like the orange. There we are. This got sun early this morning. We'll put, it, we'll put that back out there. Tighten up the uh, hammock ropes. We'll use this um, tensioning system to do that easily. They tighten up the fly a bit. Might get rain tonight, according to the phone. The internet down uh, here is pretty weak. It's only one bar, but we're at 44%, so we'll do something about that. You know what we'll do? Hang our, our um, we'll put our sleeping bag on the clothesline. Get our food, um, and then we'll get the water for the, um, gravity filter setup that we have. There we go. So that's water, uh, on, on demand. So I'll just go down, we'll fill up, um, these things. We'll hang the clothes first. Get the water, and then we'll do other work like get some wood. Maybe we'll make some oatmeal or something. Main thing is that um, while I'm doing other things, once I get the water, the water can simply work for us, just like the sun. So we'll get those aspects going right off the bat. So right now, the phone is at um, 37%. There's a panel, we'll leave it there. Put the um, Lucy lights out as well. There we are. Maybe we'll put the, um, maybe we'll use a power bank to charge uh, the camera batteries. Put that in the sun too. And you just can't leave this here. Um, this will eventually have to be moved. Though I think the phone will be charged really quick. And these will be charged, um, we'll keep moving these during the course of the day a little bit. That water does look nice. Nice, clean. a solar array to a different spot. What do we got going? Well, we have um, this little solar power bank right here. It's charging the camera battery. Of course, the energy coming in on that small panel is a lot less than the energy going out, but it is still energy. You know. Solar lights will easily charge up today to full. What do we got in this? What do we got in this here? Sixty-six percent charged. 
That wasn't there for, I don't even think that was there for um, hardly any time at all. Maybe I've been messing around getting the water. Was that 30, 36, 37? I was getting the water, did a little bit of organization. More stuff on the clothesline. So we're getting positive results in that. You know, let's start to talk a little bit about Firecraft. Here's that for fire kit. Um, it's my little pocket lighter. This alone would easily last for, for a long time. Of course, get the little uh, bellows. Pack of matches with a striker, extra striker. Some of those tinder things, I was using these, um, these sweet fires. I was using them this winter for um, the wood stove. You know, one of the other ones left there too. They're still in the pack. Light my fire, fire steel, ferro rod. Another lighter. And a, um, Whole tube full of these matches. So I, I got a lot of stuff here. Um, a little ferro rod back there. This stuff alone would, would last pr probably months and months and months. But we gathered up some stuff just as an exercise for sustainability because that's kind of what we're doing just for the fun of it out here. And we'll take a look at it. Here's a fire kit I made on site uh, last night. That's my neck knife I brought in the tin. We found the um, punky wood. On the hike in, a yellow birch was found when we went to get water. We also found that white birch, which we found on the trail. And the cedar bark, which you found oh, about 30 feet from camp. So this is all, um, except for the knife and the tin, everything else I can just keep redoing. Do it probably a thousand times. Let's get it going though. These rocks don't really look that good but I have a whole brook down there we're getting our water from. It's kind of crumbly. They don't work out. We'll just get another rocks. I mean, another rocks? Well, we'll just get more rocks. You know what I'm saying. All right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, we got multiple hits. All right. Let's just dump all this char here because we don't, we're not going to. We can always do this again. There we go. Well, not my smoothest, but um, we got the job done. We got definitely got the job done. This thing's a fast boiler, so if I didn't bring the uh, gravity filter or tabs or anything else, I could just boil water. Although I like having water on demand in the gravity filter, but still, you know, does it in under five minutes. Maybe this leaf will make it better. Yep, it made it better. It's slippery. 
let it cool off for a second. We'll dump that in there and make the coffee. That's all we need this fire for. One hundred percent charged, but it's time to move the solar stuff. All I would need is one, one good sunny day, and I could probably run those lanterns for a week, especially that big one. The cell phone's up to one hundred percent. That's still charging. Let's charge up this headlamp. Here's the headlamp's battery. There we are. So it's at one amp. That's pretty good. This will top off in no time flat. We're doing a review on this today, in fact, for the channel. Keep out the sun. Battery is fully charged. Perfect. Okay. Having on the internet second down phone power, so we might as well um since the sun's out. Now that we're plugged in, now's my time to uh, make all the phone calls and stuff. Weather tomorrow. It's not looking good tomorrow. Down to 28 degrees and raining. What? <laughs> 28 and raining. Man, it's like, it's like literally, um, God, it's gotta be 70 right now or more. Damn. That's funny. We'll act to, um, weather tonight. Okay, here's the weather for tonight. All right, we're 69 degrees right now, so that's a pretty good guess. Um, oh, 35, 34, and after that goes down to 28. It's pretty cold. Okay. So what we have to do to we have to do is um, that filter, that microfiber filter doesn't exactly uh, freeze well. I don't think it'll be a hard freeze. So we're gonna um, run it through, blow it out. We're gonna take it in the sleeping bag with us for tonight. There it is, 28 degrees. All right. Oh, I'm showing ice here. Okay. I'll check my emails and stuff. Free energy, might as well do it right now. With the changing forecast, I decided to take down the um, gravity filter. Let me show you what's in it. There are the components of my uh, gravity filter. Sora Squeeze, which in my opinion is a better filter than the Mini. I have both. 
you get a lot better flow rate a lot longer intervals between um, back flushing for not a lot of, not, not a really a big weight penalty and not that much more cost really I um, back flushed it shook it blew it out did everything I could to dry it out the best I can and I'm going to take this into the hammock with me tonight if it gets below freezing because freezing is no good for these so we'll do that this is not a deep winter type filter the little uh, back flusher cleaning plunger they call it it's a really big hypodermic needle thing with a um, little um, nozzle tip this uh, and I made this part right here you can buy um, this from Sawyer and I basically cut the little straw from I believe the straw came from mini I think and then put the adapter on this so basically there we go and that's how that works just a tubing and this part goes onto this um, platypus bag right here I clean the bag out now in addition to these items I also have water taps these alone probably would have taken care of me since I've been here easily so there's just in case something goes wrong I have um, a squeeze bag so I don't have to use the gravity filter if I don't want to extra nozzle top in case I lose this one this is a little adapter it goes on a bottle um, one of the, uh, my sweet water sweet water bottle or a soda bottle and then can be used to um, back flush the system I believe I only used it a couple times in case this thing breaks this is another piece I bought I like redundancy on stuff so that's the whole thing right there let's talk about camp security when I left, I just grabbed my pack, and this was in it. I keep this in the side pocket. Regular bear spray. There's bears here. So that's what's in the pack, and that's what I got here. Now, I also had on me my everyday carry. When I don't want to, like, carry a uh, large gun, this is it. Safety first, so we have it... Um, I only had one magazine with me. So the, I stopped at a gun store, picked up um, a whole bunch more. Would there be a gun store open uh, during an emergency? I don't know. I mean, you know, but there would be one if I just wanted to get away for a while. And only having um, seven rounds on me yeah I'd rather have 50 so you know it's a little extra, little extra for camp security not that I'm gonna get in a prolonged gunfight with a 3A automatic and bear spray but it's what I got so it is what it is the solar stuff we've been doing has been a fun exercise but I'm gonna tell you the truth about something if you're on the Appalachian Trail most of the uh, through hikers they're carrying a power bank this power bank for instance this one 10,000 milliamp hours if i was conservative this could easily keep the phone going and that's that's primarily what what most of them use it for but i can also charge batteries with it and things like that so usually a power bank is your go-to uh at least that's for a lot of long distance hikers going through the um, Appalachian Trail or, or similar long trails out west they're going to the power bank so what we're doing is a lot of um, 
kind of role playing, you know, for sustained, sustained camp. We're not moving around much. And what if we had to stay for a while? Let's take a look at some other um, energy alternatives. And we'll talk about batteries a little more. If you're looking for energy density, 18650 batteries are about it. That's one of the things about um, solar charging and all this other stuff. I could easily carry enough of these batteries to last me a long, long time. That's another consideration. Just probably two of these batteries would have been enough. I think there's a storm moving in, so if you hear any wind, I apologize. There we go. So I can get a, lot, a, a great deal of power out of these batteries. Um, but here's one thing though. Some people aren't comfortable with uh, lithium ion batteries. Here's a cool thing about this, I'm gonna show you. I like redundancy, if possible. And this, and this battery right here, If I want to, there we are. It's pretty much full, but I'm charging it by directly plugging in. This is a Nikkor battery. So it's a cool uh, redundancy feature. I don't know if you can see, it. I don't know if you can see, but it'll be red when it's charging. I should review this battery, but I love redundancy that doesn't add extra weight. But anyways, as I was saying, not everybody's comfortable with 18650 or lithium ion batteries, even though odds are they're probably in your power bank. The ultimate in, um, long-term energy is probably the any loop these can be recharged like 2100 times i've had packages of any loops like seven years old still work you know brand new seven year old package of any loops open them up they still work just fine so you know for the apocalypse if i have some any loops they're probably gonna outlast me We have a storm coming in tonight, I guess. Um, so obviously you want to get all the stuff off the line. Probably be cold enough to put the stuff back on. Uh, we're getting the last of the sun for you. We cleaned, uh, we cleaned this up pretty good. This will prevent water from running down the ridge line. I could also tie a, a, a line, a drip line as well, but this is what I'm going to use. I don't have to worry about this. I may tighten up the uh, tarp pitch a little. I'll probably keep it that wide. We've got, um, I could do a storm pitch while I'll lower it. I might. I'll think about it, but we've got, um, six tie-offs on it that's a lot i'm not a huge amount but more than four obviously don't have to worry about you you're waterproof we're good for water so all that remains is i guess we'll get the wood It's gonna be our uh, trickiest fire challenge yet. Birch bark. You 
you know, that, that's this, uh, this was really on the edge. I didn't think, um, I didn't think I was going to be able to pull that one off. But, you know, we really tried hard. We were persistent. And somehow, uh, we managed to overcome. That's how firecraft actually should be. It's great practicing skills. But, for real work, I tend to like the easy way. We're not practicing skills, we're just having fun. Here's a look at the tools that uh, I brought with me. A neck knife, more a companion, a large uh, Swiss Army knife with saw, and a hiker. This is always in my um, hiking stuff. No big, no big cutting tools, no big axes. Don't really need them since I have the shelter and everything else. I pulled everything under the um, under the tarp far enough in. Windblown rain may still hit it a little bit, but unless it's an amazing um, wind going in one direction for a long time, that's almost always okay, especially the big tarp like that. I decided to keep the pitch the way it was, but I um, tightened everything up. So, this is a very big tarp. Look at that. A lot of room under here. Does it get cold? To the uh, closed cell pad under here. And we have the um, open cell pad with that. The sleeping bag. Put all the clothes on, including, uh, we'll keep the uh, pants, but I took all the cotton off. So all I have is a synthetic on. We tighten this up here. That's about it. Hammock's pretty comfortable. It's meshing. Uh, one keeps out the bugs. But uh, right now it's keeping out the wind. You know, during super, super, super hot weather. You can't stay in the sleeping bag in here. Because the airflow is reduced a little bit. But at least it's helped me out now. The sill nylon, you see right there, that keeps out wind from hitting me there. Plus the under pad and the closed cell pad. It's not bad. Looks like we lucked out. Didn't rain last night or snow. That's good because it um, means everything won't be wet when they pack up. This whole thing is kind of like a no-knot system, really. There we go. So if it was raining, I would lower the hammock underneath the um, rain fly, and I would do everything there. We're headed now. Um, that's kind of fun. You know, a lot of times you'll see stuff on how to keep a primitive camp going. Well, this time we kept a modern camp going. We had internet, had the cell phone. Um, we could get the fire going, area lighting, stove. Could keep going pretty much forever. Um, of course, the practicality, a lot of that is based on how long you got to stay, and what situation you've got going on. Of course, some people in Puerto Rico, they still don't have power yet. So, it's what it is. All right, if you like what you've seen, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. Y'all have a great day. I need to keep going.